How many fish did you? You caught ten over the two days. Five and five. Fishing was pretty. Five and five. Fishing was pretty slow in general. Um, but you know, we managed to just stay consistent. I mean, I kind of knew if I told myself if we caught five the second day, we were probably win it. I mean, we weren't even yeah. in the first first place. Of, you know, I think we were singing fourth after third or fourth after the first day. But just the way fishing has been, I know if we could replicate five again, I'm sure we would be pretty close. And how did it start out? Like, what was the origin story? Too much alcohol. Really? <laughs> okay. Because if God wanted us to have five glass boats, he would have given us five glass trees. It's, it's for fishermen. It's not for taking the wife and the wife's friends. It's, I think that it's a really, really pretty bit. And then there was a blur that went by and ended up in the cockpit as yeah. far as if I can remember uh-huh. correctly. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to the State of Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm Nick Carullo. I'm joined with me, Anthony Pino, with Hooked Optics and Captain of the Blood Money. Uh, tonight, there's no guests. It's just going to be us two. We're just going to kind of have a few different topics and just discuss what's kind of what's going on in both our worlds right now. Anthony, what do you got? Let's talk about you, buddy. Let's. You're the... You're the more relevant man. You've been fishing. I haven't. I haven't been fishing since uh, since I was in Mag Bay. So I, I haven't <laughs> been fishing. So um, you got what do you? You had you fish one tournament with the remix crowd, right? On the yep. Invincible, and you won that, which is pretty normal for you. <laughs> and then uh, and then you uh, fished Operation Sailfish, and uh, yeah, that's too hot. Yeah, so, you're on one. Let's you're recap. One. Yeah, let's, so let's recap uh, the one, the good one first, the the remix, man. You said Scotty helped you out a little bit? Yeah, Silver Sailfish Derby, uh, 85th annual, so pretty kind of historic tournament. Uh, you know, a lot of guys have fished it. Uh, so yeah, it was a, it was a good one. Uh, definitely a good one to win. Finally, first win in that one, so... You said it. You said that when when I texted you about that. You said it was a big one. Is that just because the money, or just because it's a like an old, it's like a really prestigious tournament? Yeah, I just both? I think. I mean, no, the the money is you know the money is so so. Uh, it is a cast tournament, which is cool. Um, but yeah, just the prestige. You know, it's been the history of it. The West Palm Beach West Palm Beach Fishing Club, um, which they just do a great job, and it's actually it would be a really cool kind of club to be a part of you know it's everything revolves around the sail fishing and they give out you know yearly awards for you know the members and they mm-hmm. di- constantly have you know tournaments and angler awards within the club itself so and they you know they give out those awards at the award ceremony for that tournament so you kind of get to be a part of it because most of the people that fish the tournament are club guys you know so they probably don't like when an outside guy like me wins it i'm actually pretty confident they don't because I heard some when I was at Palm Beach last week. I talked with some people about it. We'll leave that what? for later on. They don't what? They don't like me winning it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, maybe I'll just have to join the club then. So, yeah, that's so what I'll you be should happy, do. Yeah, I'd be happy with me winning it. Yeah. That's so, cool, there was that. Cool. Yeah. So, that was three days or two days in that tournament? That's two day. Two day, four two line, day. which is four line is a little... Uh, it's a different for what I'm used to because usually our tournaments are seven line. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, so it's a it's a it's a difference, you know. I think they, you know, it's how they've always done it, and I think they've never changed it just because I think um, I think it maybe evens the playing field out a little bit. Yeah, you don't need a whole deck a whole deck full of snipers, you know. Yeah. Like, I mean, and it is you know there's no professional anglers as well, so you know that makes it interesting did that help you do your guys or your amateur guys or the owners and his guests or his friends or whoever your team the amateur guys pretty pretty good uh yeah or do you, you think know, that it was kind yeah, of yeah i same? mean they're they're good i mean obviously they're not like i wouldn't say they're you know i'm not going to compare them to some of my you know great guys i have on my boat you know but they do mm-hmm. a great they did a great job you know they're eager to learn uh and that's really all you need you know you just need guys that want to learn and listen and uh you know, really yeah. Good. What? Um, how many fish did you? You caught ten over the two days. Five and five. Fishing was pretty. Five and five. Fishing was pretty slow in general. Um, but you know, we managed to just stay consistent. I mean, I kind of knew if I told myself if we caught five the second day, we were we'd probably win it. I mean, we weren't even yeah. in the first first place. Of, you know, I think we were singing fourth after third or fourth after the first day. But just the way fishing has been, I know if we could replicate five again, I'm sure we would be 
pretty close. Yeah. How? So I don't like. I, how much time have you spent in Palm, the Palm Beach area? Like, do you, are you pretty knowledgeable about the the area? I mean, I know that south of Juno, it's like everything. You know, you know that it's all kind of the same, but it's all kind of different too. And to to be to win a tournament like that, you kind of got to know what's going bottom structure and you know what conditions and what areas to look for in right yeah no it's it's definitely different and over the past 10 12 years you know you know fishing at least one tournament a year up there maybe two you know i definitely Mm -hmm. you know it definitely took some time to figure out that area i mean it's definitely different than our south florida like you know you know boynton south is just a different yeah once you get once you once you get above juno beach right it starts to spread out and you can kind of yeah, find a, them in a little bit a little a bit gradual, more yeah it's a gradual yeah. drop off versus everything south of that is a pretty steep drop off so 100 foot to 200 foot is a much narrow highway than up there to the north you know what i mean i got you 100 foot to 200 foot up there is it's it's far i mean yeah i don't even know a couple miles or so maybe more yeah so y- so you said that you said that Scotty helped you out, Scotty Fawcett, who we had on the pod a couple of weeks ago. Did he just show you some some areas that, or let you know about some areas that because of good bottom structure or good current or what? What did what did he help? Yeah, you out with? I mean that was just a, you know definitely we built a relationship after the podcast that I'm super you know grateful for. He's an amazing guy and definitely uh, I've already learned a lot from just in the short amount of time I've known him, but. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just kind of, you know, I've asked him about a couple wrecks I saw up on the Garmin that I asked him about. And, you know, he's like, be the first guy at this wreck, you know, on the next one. Or like mm-hmm. be the last guy at that wreck. Uh, and then also some rock piles and stuff that, you know, some were good, obviously. Some produced, some didn't. But uh, he's just been, he's been a great help. And we've actually, I mean, we, it's like we almost talk every day now. And I've, nice. you know, he's asked me about some live bait questions he has and things like that and this past in the operation this past week in the operation he was fishing the uh the gold cup the gold cup yeah so it's cool i was in contact with him kind of even trying to help each other when we can but fishing was just kind of slow and sporadic i mean definitely uh so so that- fishing fishing was better during the silver sailfish derby than it was during the operation sailfish because it sounded pretty brutal for operation sailfish um yeah i, I mean they were both not great. I mean, obviously, Art, Jolene, and, and a lot of those guys had, uh, you know, they had great fishing kind yeah. of one, one day. I mean, Art caught 10 the first day. I think Jolene caught 9 or 10 the first day. So, I mean, obviously, that's good fishing, but day two was completely dead. And also, the thing you have to keep in mind is the derby is four lines. You know, the operation yeah, yeah. is seven lines. So, it's something to keep in mind as far as – because, you know, if I could fish seven lines in the derby, you know, I probably would have – Put up a few more numbers. Call more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. What? Uh, so were you? F- so moving into the operation sailfish, you had some boat issues that I was chatting with you about before the tournament, and that kind of, kind of screwed up you getting up up the road. Did you get up there the day it was rough, or no? You didn't. You didn't come up there that day, right? No, we were supposed to come up on Monday, um, uh-huh. but we ended up not coming up till Thursday, which you know I never. And that's do that. from. What inlet? When inlet are you living from? To- uh, that the Showtime boat is out of a uh, haulover, so like North Miami. Okay, I got you. Um, but yeah, typically so that's a we, hike. It's a hike, and typically we get up there early enough where we pre-fish two days. You mm-hmm. know, kind of go fish the north side, south side. Uh, but you know, not unable to do it this time. But it happens. Definitely not going to make any excuses. Yeah. And uh, no, you don't make any excuses, but shows how also how important pre-fishing is for tournaments you know I, I feel like up here in ocean city you know for years at least on our boat for years and years we used to just go and go fucking fishing the first day of the tournament after like the first time in like a week yeah we'd be like man why are we getting our ass kicked then we realized that these guys were you know we, we started fishing before the tournaments we started being more competitive because you know even if you don't know what you're like you know you know what you're if you're fishing up up leading up to the tournament, you know you're in the right spot of the you like to think you're you know yeah. you're in the right spot of the wrong spot, you know? Like Absolutely. it's just just important is important to realize you're in the wrong spot early as it is. You know, you could be looking around and be like, "Man, it just it was good here, but I'm not seeing the same signs. I'm not going to sit here and 
and beat it out, you know, I'm going to move, which I yeah. think is I think that that's up here. I think that's lost in a lot of people, maybe because of schedules or whatever. But, you know, also luck plays a lot more factors in these tournaments than down there, you know, but um, I don't yeah, know. I, mean, I feel like, you know, you need to get the fu- you need to get the fuck out there and see what's yeah, going on. Absolutely. Know? You have to be out there. I mean, you I mean, some guys, you know, you know, maybe they go out there one day before or sometimes they don't and they actually just rely on reports from other guys mm-hmm. but you know for me it, yeah i i don't really want to i need to look at it myself you know would you say that those guys that typically do well like they haven't fished in like a week or something like that and they're like and they go and do well on the first day of a tournament they're probably guys that have been doing it for a long time so when somebody tells them something they're kind of like ah, i can i can kind of make it up kind of build the scenario in their head you know where we're yeah, some of them i mean i'd say yeah. a lot of the you know i, I would want to say a lot of the majority of you know i would say the top teams are out there though you know you yeah, know yeah. i'd say yeah. you know it's maybe there are a few guys that actually aren't there out there as much that still manage to do well but you know obviously i'd say majority of the guys are the guys that you know are putting the time in out there fishing you know yeah, and it's not only for just for the guys driving the boat like us. It's for like I can notice when we start fishing at the beginning of the season and towards the end of the season, the guys are much more confident with the rods in their hands. Absolutely, they're a, a little bit. You know, you can s- see the dexterity building over the course. And these are guys that I like. My guys are fish a lot, but even you know, just getting used to getting back on the boat because we mean what's similar about what we do is like we kind of fish certain seasons and we have like a long off season, you know, for our, you have a tournament boat, then you have another boat you work on. And then I just have the same boat, but they're big off season. So sometimes people kind of, they, the guys downstairs kind of lose the, you know, it's, it's a learned skill like anything else, you know, you, it, I'm a firm believer that anybody can be a good angler, but you got to fight, not, it's not a gift. You got to go out there and do it, you know? Like, yeah. Well, how you know, much, you, like before your tournament season kind of gets going up there, what, how many times would you say your team is actually out there actually just fun fishing as a team? So we start tuna fishing up here in, in like May, late May, early June. So we do a fair amount of tuna fishing together, which isn't really great for the ability, like when it comes to picking up the rod and not missing a fish, but it's good for communication because we fish like 12 lines. We try to get them all bit, you know. We get, we get covered up by yellow fins and big eyes and try to get them all entangled yeah. and kind of work really, really quickly. Because the guys, whether we're tuna fishing or marlin fishing, they want to do as well as we possibly can on the day. So yeah, yeah. That, that tuna fishing is kind of a nice icebreaker back in, like back in the season that, you know, you can come out and kind of have a good time and not be completely focused like you have to be marlin fishing. But, but I would say we probably fish uh, probably about a, a dozen days before we fish our real our first tournament um in july which was the jimmy johnson atlantic city you know we fish about a dozen days together and then i fish a couple times with just the owners one or one or the other owner or with charters you know and it helped it it, it really paid off to you know to the guys are just from the tuna fishing just being able to work as a team and get shit done quickly because there you kind of with the tunas early in the season, you get kind of clobbered all at once, and then you can go another two hours without getting clobbered all at once again. Or you can turn around with the sonars now. You can turn around, set back out real quick, and that just helps them all work as a team a little bit. Yeah, better, yeah. You know, yeah, that, without the kind of without well, it's the good kind because of, you're building chemistry just being out there together yeah, as a team. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and, and that that kind of without the pressures of like you know fishing in a tournament. Yeah. You know, then come, then we start marlin fishing. We get a couple more bites, and now we're just straight marlin fishing. And you know, up here, what's cool about up here is probably what's similar anywhere else is like, you know, with my guys, every day is kind of a tournament and a fun fishing day. Like you pull in, and everybody's got five or six, and you've got two or three. You're, you know, you're like, you're still happy, you're still fishing and having a good time, but you're like, eh, you know, yeah, we could have done course. a little better. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's, that's anywhere, and I think being a competitive fisherman, I mean, I think you want to go out there with the mindset to, uh, on a fun fish day to have more flags hanging than everybody else, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, I if, mean, if, just... and if you don't, then maybe tournament fishing is not for you, you know? Yeah, exactly. Cause there's plenty of people in the world that, that want to go and just go fishing and ha- drink beers and have a good times with their buddies. And then there's other yeah, guys. Nothing wrong with like, that. No, that, I, 
I actually sometimes wish that I enjoyed that more. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, but I don't. <laughs> Yeah, I, like it's I, I don't think like I'm happy that I'm on a boat with people that I don't think that they can like they can help it, you know, like they can't help that feeling at the end of the day. If we didn't do well, they'd be like, well, fuck, you know, yeah. we met, we were we didn't have a good ratio or I was just out in fucking la la land. I find myself out in the middle of nowhere constantly. But um, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just taking that mentality and kind of building up to up to the tournaments kind of like kind of probably like what you guys do. And then, and then you went into, so you, you kicked ass and won. It's really interesting. Cause I remember talking to you about the, the tournament you fished down in the keys and you were like, you were third. And I was like, well, third's in the money. It's fucking good. I don't know how much money is money, but I was like, that's still fucking like, I'd be ecstatic to have third in the tournament, but you're like, oh, well we just, it was, didn't go well. Or like, you were just like splitting hairs along your day. And then you have this, another great day, their tournament up in, uh, up in, uh, Palm beach. And then you win that, and then now you you go completely the opposite direction. You have some issues with the boat. You lose some bait, and you're kind of late getting up up to Palm Beach, and then kind of like how did how going through there like were you just like when when these things were kind of going wrong? Were you like, well, we're just gonna go? Were you still confident, or were you kind of losing hope, or like what's your mentality there, dude? No, I mean obviously still still staying confident, but you know obviously. It does suck, you know, you're just like, takes a little of the, just, I'm not going to say it took out confidence, but it definitely it's like, oh, fuck. It's like, why is this happening? You know? Yeah. But then like, sometimes I mean, you're, you're just you... like, you're like, well, maybe it's going to go our way in the tournament after all these, yeah, yeah. you know, negative things happen. You know? if, you, but, if you just keep on battling through, you could do that. Yeah. But like, I can't but imagine when the, you lose. Yeah. It's part, it's you, part of the game lose. too, you know? So it's, it's not like, you know, it, it happens to probably a handful of boats every tournament, you know, like I know boats yeah, yeah. This, this past tournament that, you know, had engine issues, had to switch boats, you know, so it's, mm-hmm. it happens, you man. And you know, it's, it's part I just, of the game. I mean, when you, when you lose a whole pen of bait, that's basically your fucking family. I mean, that's gotta be devastating. You got all names for them. They're yeah. fucking, you know, like that's gotta, you've been working on these things for how long were you working on that batch of bait, feeding them and everything like that? Oh, like, you know, Probably had some thread fins, probably three, four weeks, you know, eating oh. you know, beautiful baits, yeah. you know? So yeah, it, it hurts, you know, cause obviously, you know, you're, you know, you're not going to have that same bait, you know, no matter what you do, yeah, so. yeah. but it's got to make the best of it and, you know, bounce back. I mean, obviously it wasn't good. That's not how we wanted to start, you know, that tournament, but Hey, that's all right. We'll, we'll get after it the next one. Yeah. I mean, you just got to kind of. I mean, how's the how's the team at the end of that? Do you got to be like, oh, let's, you know, we're we're done with this one. Let's move on to the next one. Or everybody kind of got the mindset that you kind of, you know, you feel yeah, shitty I mean, about I, this one and then move on. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, they probably take it all better than I do, honestly. You know, they're all probably yeah. like, you know, don't worry about it. Thanks, babe. You know, they're probably like, don't worry about it, Cap. You know, you know, yeah. you know, we'll be back. There you go. Got champagne uh, now. There you go. So yeah, I mean, you know, they all got. They're all. They all. You know, they all get it and they know it happens. Yeah, yeah. They know that, hey, if, we're gonna, if we did bad, you know, it's just a matter of time until we do good again, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, do you feel like, you know, as long as you keep on doing the things that you know have worked, you know, you obviously got to, how set in your ways are you with, with stuff? Like when you hear of somebody doing another boat, you hear about what they're doing when they're doing well, or are you like, uh, I'll wait to try that, or do you try it right away? Like, I don't, I don't know what a good example is, but like up here, it's like, you know, one boat up like has a, has a dredge or been catching them and they have a certain dredge and everybody's like, oh, we got to get that dredge. And I'm like, maybe they're just really, maybe the guy driving is really good at driving over them and they don't miss, you know, like, yeah, but I'm kind of for being a young guy, I'm pretty set in my ways about how I'd like to do things. What about you? I mean, you yeah. know, uh, yeah, I mean, we're pretty, I mean, I don't think there's anything really we're changing necessarily you know as far for the most part you know i mean maybe in certain tournaments maybe you're fishing one type of bait you know more than other Mm -hmm. types of bait which you know it does happen uh you know like i said in our a lot of our tournaments it's seven lines so sometimes if we feel like they're eating something over something else we'll fish seven of those baits you know we got you so yeah i mean i'd say that's a part of it you know and you kind of ask if if there is a boat that's getting bit you know, more than you, you know, that's probably one of the first questions you're going to ask them. Like, yo, what are you fishing? Are you fishing gogs? You're fishing yeah. herring, you're fishing sardines, you know, and it happens, you know, some, 
if you have 40 boats in a 10 mile area, one or two boats are catching more fish. You know, a lot of times it could be, could be the bait, you know, it could be one boats fishing all, you know, they're focused in on herring that day, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. And maybe there's half the boats don't have that many herring or they don't have that many sardines. So it goes into, is there any rhyme or reason to when, like, do you, when you, when you, when you are only catching them on herring, do you actually like mark ball? I don't know how herring work or anything like that, but do you mark hair? Do you know you're marking herring? You're like, we should be fishing herring, you know? Well, you're not ever really, I mean, I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, you're never really marking herring offshore. Uh, It's, you know, basically inshore, but I got you. Uh, and then gogs, you know, I, I wouldn't know if I really marked them during the day. I probably have. I just didn't know it because uh, they are. I got you. They are where we are fishing. That's where, you know, you catch them yeah, at yeah. night. Uh, I got and you. then sardines as well. I mean, they're out there and there are times we do see the sardines and we have seen sales falling the sardines out there. And then yeah, yeah. it's not as common, but it happens. Yeah, like there's like up here, it's kind of like when I'm fishing in shallow and I'm marking squids, I just put two red squid judges out. Kind of yeah. makes sense to me, you know? Yeah, yeah. Whereas like, you know, if I'm offshore, I fish a blue, like, and there's a lot of flyers around. I'll fish a, like a, a flippy floppy and a blue squid dredge or something like, like something that I, I think I feel looks like a, looks like a flying fish, whether it does or doesn't, I don't know. Yeah. But like, I'm constantly like, kind of like, oh, I'm going to try and match the hatch here. Yeah, yeah, know? absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's true. So, well, as far as I'm concerned, being in the money two out of three tournaments is still pretty fucking badass considering how competitive it is down there. Yeah, absolutely. And we got we got two more tournaments the next. I got one this weekend and one next weekend uh, on the remix. So we'll see. Let's hopefully uh, bounce back from this one and, you know, see if we could keep placing. Got Isla, Isla Do you Mata. have the same... Do some of the same guys fish both tournaments with you, or do you have completely different crews for both tournaments for both uh, boots? I'd say the the crew stays the same, and then like the owner switches. I got gotcha. you. Okay, the yeah. owner and the anglers. Then yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, interesting. You, you so like it'll be boats. like me, JC, uh, JC Clear, George Corzo, and then like Kyle Sherman is too. Like so, that's like our crew that kind of stays pretty consistent. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, like I said, like the owner anglers kind of swap out. I got you. That's so cool that you can kind of like you got that program and then you even got the boat, the other boat that you like work on. I guess that's full time, you know, but that's yeah. just so badass that 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 is the way it is down there where like you can kind of jump from boat to boat and have it all together. That's yeah. Yeah. Nice. And J- I mean, JC will probably JC will run the boat for the next tournaments. Uh, and then I'm hoping to get the Weaver that's, you know, in the yard now doing a bunch of work. Hopefully I'll get that boat in the mix for next sailfish season too. I got you. Now we, is that, is that a completely different owner or is that? Yep. Completely okay. Gotcha. Different. So that's a full-time, full-time. Deal. Yeah. 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 I didn't know if it was one of the other guys that kind of stepping up. Yeah. Um, what do you like, do you think that that would be a better platform than, you know, the release or the invincible? I feel like the center console is kind of necessary. Yeah. I mean, or the walking, yeah, like the being able to fish yeah, completely yeah, yeah. around. Yeah, obviously that's you know that's a great platform. Obviously, I mean you know we we're talking about this weekend catching because like the Jolene boat that won the tournament this past week. It's like a the Viking sixty one Viking or something yeah like sixty one Viking or something. Yeah. And we're you know they caught a five banger and a four banger, and you know on a big boat, man, you know it's hard. It you know you don't have you yeah. can't send you can't send two guys to the bow and keep a couple guys in the back, you know, it's, I mean, I think you still have to do it regardless. You know, if your mates are hooked up, you have to put them on the bow and keep, you know, yeah. probably the owners in the back of the boat. But it's, it's so, it's so much more difficult. I don't know if the Jolene has a bow rail, but you it know, doesn't. most, sport, doesn't. <laughs> yeah. So most sport fish boats on the East coast, they don't have bow rails, like say over in Cabo or something like that. You send somebody up on the bow. Like, I don't, I haven't been up on the bow very often on a sport fish boat in rough weather, but the times I have, it ain't fucking, it's not fun. It's not enjoyable. No. no. And no especially bow rail, you could fish. slide yeah. right off, you know? Yeah. And you know, I've, I've, I've been there and I've, I've been up there on the bow and rough seas and yeah. it could get sketchy, you know? Yeah. Even with the, like the, like the, they, some people put the, like the, whatever you call it. Yeah. Up yeah. on the bow, but that's yeah. still a long walk between the house 
and and a lot of the houses don't even have like like Vikings that have a rail under under the edge of the house. Some of the custom boats have it up, up on top of the yeah up on top of the up on top of the bridge. But you know that's still a long walk between. Like I, I'm constantly almost falling off my boat at the dock. Yeah, let yeah. alone like you know it's it's really interesting to see. You know you're going to be more comfortable on that big boat, and I'm obviously you're going to see a little bit more being way way high up in the tower. But you have to deal with that kind of evens the playing field with not being able to fish completely around the boat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are some guys too. Uh, not a lot of boats, but there are some boats, especially when it's rough. You'll see them basically put a dock line from the bottom, mm-hmm. you I've know, of that. the tower leg, you know, going forward to yeah, the yeah. front cleat. You know, just yeah, yeah. they could hold something. You know, yeah, but. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's uh, definitely, you know, Jolene, they crushed it. And, you know, catching big multiples like that on a big boat is, that's, that's difficult. Yeah, and especially slow fishing like, like that. Like, you would, when you hear somebody catch five, you're just like, fuck. Like, if, if you know uh, that there's not, you know, if you know you can't make it up with a double and a triple, like, in the next hour, you're, you know, or a couple hours, you're like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and slow fishing and yeah. having a multiple like that, dude, I mean, that's, you know, and if you could capitalize on multiples like that, I mean, that's going to, yeah, that's just going to put you up there and it's going to be hard for people to catch you. I mean, like my buddy on yeah. my buddy, Billy runs the, uh, double take big American boat. Uh, you know, they had a five banger next to me and they only caught two of them, you know, it's a killer, you know, I mean, that, yeah, you know, two for two out of the five hurt, you know, when you have that yeah, opportunity, that's sure. but it's hard. Yeah. It's interesting that were there was that a lot of like when people got bit were there like a lot of a lot of big multiples like that or that's what or, it seemed like I mean yeah huh. it seemed like when you were getting bit people were getting multiples triples quads five bangers uh, that's what it seemed like and we couldn't even buy a single yeah. but yeah that's how it goes yeah I'm not gonna feel sorry for you that you <laughs> do well at one tournament <laughs> that's part of it yeah dude gotta. I, I don't know. I feel like it feels so easy when you're fucking on that roll and then you, you got to come back down to come back down the earth of it eventually, you know, there's too yeah. many good, there's too many people that are good at this sort of, whether it be down there or up here, there's too many people that are good at it, you know, yeah, yeah. that really work hard at it. Like there's, you know, there's 40 or 50 boat, 40 boats up here that, you know, on any given day during the big tournaments up here, that get that could be yeah, the yeah. one getting them, you know? So, yeah, no, it's a lot of, a lot of good guys, a lot of good teams now. So, speaking of good teams, a little shout out to John Mead on the Showtime and the yep. full, full, full lady angler crew winning the Gold Cup. I think that's that's pretty pretty badass. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we got the. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool to be. You know, obviously I'm not in the tournament, but I actually get the. You know, I had the trollers trolling around me in the tournament yeah. because we were kind of fishing in the same waters. So. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool, you know, kind of. Was that up to up to the north of up past the Juno Pier? Yeah, yeah, and it, you know, there was an, you know, there was a day when you know, I and I listened to the trolling, you know, the their radio, and yeah, you know, mm-hmm. rather than listening to mine, because I'd rather hear what those guys are seeing. They're coming a lot more water north than, than I am, and know? they're they're typically north of you, right? Typically, and so if yeah. if I hear them seeing something, I try to you know get as close as I can to them. Uh, yeah. And there were moments when, you know, I thought I heard certain things, reports, and they were seeing some fish and I actually was able to fish near them at one point, but that's still like, I was like, man, we're going to get a bite here. We just never did. So yeah, part of it. So like trollers yeah. can't say live baiters get bit more than trollers because they were getting bit all around me. Hmm. That's interesting. Now, obviously there's no rule against going trolling in, in like that turn in operations. It's just not typically... It's not typically worth doing, you know, right? Like you, yeah. Can't, I mean, like just it, the they don't gears. specify. Yeah, yeah. But but if you like, no, yeah. But, you could fit. Yeah. You could be a, you could be a dead baiter. Obviously, fish in a live bait tournament, you know. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, you know, for the for the majority of the time, you know, obviously, I guess live baiters are going to probably have the edge, you know. But mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised. There are certain days where, especially when fishing baiters, slow and spread out. Exactly. I mean, it's kind of. Yeah. Yeah, if it's calm and spread out and slow fishing, I, I think the trollers definitely have an advantage. They're covering way more ground, yeah. and they're gonna they're gonna drive over fish that enough fish that certain ones are gonna bite. You know? Yeah, yeah. Especially yeah, if you, there's no current, you know, because as a live baiter, 
if you don't have current, we're fucking sitting in the same damn spot like yeah. we're anchored, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you could be pushing a little bit, but it's definitely not the same as trolling around six knots everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So interesting. Find that interesting. But yeah, the Maybe. Bucks. The Bucks this weekend, which that's a dead bait troll tournament, and it's mm-hmm. stick us three to one. Three to, three one. to one. And then yeah. I'm gonna, I'm actually we're gonna be fit. I'm not fishing the buck, which I wish I was. Uh, but the next weekend after that is the Jupiter billfish, and that's I believe three to one as well. And we're gonna be fishing mm-hmm. that, so I'm excited to do that. Cool. And at some point, these fishing, this fishing's got to get better here pretty soon. I yeah, like. Well, was it, was it any good? Like, it, it blew out of the north today down there, right? Or two oh, days ago? No, well... It was a front that came through, we right? had Yeah, we had a little north wind, and it's going to be north tomorrow. It's west today. is north tomorrow. Um, and we have another little front coming through. I mean, so there, it's got to be... At any moment here coming up, is, fishing's got to really turn on here soon. Yeah. I mean, it just seems like... I don't know. I don't know, you know, we don't know why, but it's like every year fishing is kind of a little later and later every year, which sucks because usually like these tournaments are like big numbers, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I it's mean, I remember. it's fun, you know, when you're putting up numbers, even if you don't win, you still have fun. You're like, shit, we caught 20 fish or 25 fish, yeah. you know? That's like, yeah, it definitely is. I mean, I've been fortunate enough to fish in Costa Rica a fair amount, and, you know, you catch 15 or 20 sails and it. In, in a day or something like that and you you know in your 10th place you still feel like you had gave yourself a shot you know up here in ocean city some days you know we caught for the white marlin open we were tied for second and i think we caught 10 10 fish all all week in three days you know like the difference between missing a fish and and converting on that fish is like fucking 15 20 places sometimes you know yeah which i you know it's it's always like you at the end of the day you still go fishing to go fishing and hopefully just have have good days and you know it's a lot easier to take not doing well if the best boat caught 50 and you caught 20 you know yeah <laughs> yeah so well how about that fishing in costa rica right now the rockstar tournament that fishing the was blue marlin fishing man yeah the, Dude. it's been a i don't know and I would love to. We probably need to talk to somebody. They they definitely stacked the deck on the cabana, uh, and they ended up winning it six hundred and something thousand dollars for Eddie. And well, who won? Can't, cabana won or the other boat won? I thought. I think. It, let me look. I think it was a cabana. Well, I thought. Oh no, uh, the Valcaro one. Val- the Valcaro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One. yeah. Okay. I know Valcaro Eddie. Won. Eddie was in first place there. I think pretty close. I guess. They yeah. Was, let I me guess they up. bumped them there at look. the end of the day. But yeah, that's a big check. Let man. me look. Yeah, that's a for for a you know I I feel like I feel like for numbers for like a a numbers tournament that's a pretty big pretty big number for like a you know typically the big the big money you hear big money in the Gulf Coast for a killfish or up here for a killfish or even the Bisbees for a killfish just kind of it's kind of more luck of the draw and that's why people feel like they have a chance but you know six hundred grand for a for a Release tournament. for a release tournament is fantastic, man. Dude, that's but even though Cabana Eddie, I mean, he won this tournament last year and I guess came in second this year, so that's you know, big props yeah. to him. On that. Yeah, he's a big Eddie. And my cousin fished Oops. with him for a while, Chandler Miles. You know, he was there last okay. year. Okay, so. I got you. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm sure you you probably actually met him up there by you. I don't know. Like, for I'm I'm oblivious to anything that goes on in Ocean City. I know who who he is, but I don't know if I've ever really really hung out with him. So it was the Valcaro, the Cabana, the Game Plan, Outage, and the Tar Heel are the top five. And the Valcaro caught like 14 blue marlin or something. It was 12 blue marlin and. 15 sailfish which that's pretty ridiculous dude yeah no that's like, insane that's some sick fishing that that's a three-day tournament yeah that's sick and fishing the, you can't beat that yeah, that is uh exceptionally good even for costa rica an exceptionally good blue marlin fishing so and then the the cabana caught nine blues and 25 sails in three days which is you know sick. i mean i think there was like 71 or 75 boats in that tournament i mean for costa rica like to go out and see 71 boats fishing is like, you're like, Oh my God, am I back in the States? You know, it's uh, crazy. Yeah. To that's see sick. That. No, it's so I feel like every tournament everywhere in the world right now is this getting bigger well, and bigger. Yeah. What a weekend it was. So you had the gold cup and the, uh, operation, and the, the rock star operation, the rock star. And there was another one somewhere. 
can't remember what it was, but it was like, man, I felt left out. I wasn't fishing a tournament anywhere. So it might have been the um, Pelican too this weekend or something. I think it. I think it was maybe. I think the Pelican finishes earlier in the weekend, like on a Saturday. Yeah. But but I I think it was the Pelican too. It's like, man, you could go anywhere and hit a fish a tournament this weekend. And then there was one in Puerto Rico I saw had had good fishing. And the oh. R is on fire right now. <laughs> Place is always on fire. Yeah, that's salty fair catching 19 the other day or something something like that it's incredible it seems like you don't like for me because i don't pay attention to the it's not that i don't pay attention to the dr but like but like when the salty fair goes fishing it just seems like they they don't fish and then they go fishing and then it's just like 10 10 blue marlins or whatever yeah, like i every, think every, every day time. they i think every time they go out they catch at least 10 i know that they i know that they they're very strategic about fishing around the moon but beyond that i'm like they like I, they're very they have a lot of they put a they get a lot of value out of their days fishing in the dr they they got yeah. it fucking dialed in man so good for um james, james turner yeah they're Super dialed nice in. guy they're dialed in for sure i mean the boat lives there i mean they're yeah they're the top boat man yeah it's yeah. awesome maybe maybe if we get to go down there in the spring i'll just follow the follow the salty follow fair around try to try to out sonar them <laughs> Oh man! So let's talk yeah, about man. your new boat, your your the the Weaver, the fifty eight Weaver, fifty eight Weaver. I was peeling the old name off today. New name going on soon. Wire yeah. transfer. What was it called before? Real asset. That's what we call wire transfer now. I got you. And it was just a sticker on there. You didn't have to sand off the clear or anything. Yeah, like it's that? just a just a sticker. I mean, well, uh, I think maybe next year we'll paint the boat and maybe we'll do like a faux transom next year. But as of now, it's just gonna keep it simple and. Try to not spend more time in the yard than we already there. So yeah, whatever whatever happened to became of the deck? You cut the deck out because you had rot in it. Because we're a actually cold mold bit. we didn't haven't cut it out just yet. I mean, we ripped up most of the teak, but now we have to rip up the subfloor. Um, uh huh. Actually, met with one of the carpenters today, trying to come up with a little bit of a plan for that. Um, what is so for context, to everybody? You know, a lot of these sport these these Carolina or maryland in your in your case um custom boat custom built boats they have a typically a teak deck with teak covering boards with a with a glass with a and uh plywood deck so sometimes they sometimes people depending on who installs the deck will use screws to when they glue down the teak to the deck they'll use screws to to uh to make the deck adhere to the subfloor, which is the subfloor that Nick's talking to. And it's kind of a recipe for disaster because plywood doesn't do well. It does great when it's fully encapsulated in, in fiberglass. It's pretty much waterproof. But if you get any sort of water intrusion, you're completely fucked. Yeah. And Nick, taking care of your new boat, had to do that. So we, we've we been talking about this for, for quite some time now, me and you privately. But like, yeah, yeah. what's the point? Like now that the you you pulled up the teak and then you're you kind of got to cut cut the subfloor out and you're are you going to go with the kusa or are you going to go with a uh, with a uh, plywood again i think the plan is to go with a plywood again um mm -hmm. and leave like a small lip around the whole outside frame and he was talking okay. about using some sort of adhesive to glue it up under the sides there and then glass over the top of it gotcha and then the screw worst. screw it into like you know screw that obviously back into the the stringers that are there on top of the tank there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's 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 kind of you know it's kind of a double-edged sword with these cold mold. you just got to be aware of it you know it's like when so you buy wood. it's so much wood <laughs> yeah when you're when you like i was like when we went through the process of buying the blood money we went from the 56 viking which had basically no wood to yeah. a, a cost a custom boat a case in 64 case in the which was almost exclusively wood and you just got to be aware of that stuff you know yeah. now you just got to be like i'm super religious about getting every every wet spot under the the caulking like whenever i get a chance i'm pulling it up and redoing it it doesn't help i i, I think i'm just pissing in the wind but um yeah it's just dealing with that so you're doing like go through the list of the things you're doing on this boat because it's pretty extensive yeah it's endless uh sea keeper sonar teak subfloor and then uh carpet couches bar stools bedding uh full engine rebuild enclosure yeah yeah so it's and pretty, so you're uh, managing so you're, you're basic you're basically managing all all that right so you yeah. got to keep everybody in try to it's so difficult now uh, what i tell my bosses is like if i'm not the most like hated person in the boatyard by the time we leave i'm probably not doing my job right you know yeah yeah 
because you can absolutely because bro and the, that uh, you know that, that the you know some of my dilemma now is just getting the guys to actually get to work on your boat man because mm-hmm. you know right now everybody's busy as shit you know and you know it's it's almost like they could pick and choose the jobs they want to do you know so it's yeah. yeah you call like i called you know just the guy today that i met today to you know kind of help with the subfloor you know he's one guy and you know, he's like, oh, well, I'll get back to you and let you know when I can start. I'm like, I'm like, dude, I, I need you to start. Like, <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I called two other guys and they're like, oh, I could start you in a month. And I'm like, it's not helping, you know? So yeah. it's just tough times, but people are busy. Everybody wants, you know, you know worst, everybody's seen it. Can't even keep a boat for sale. Everyone's buying boats, doing work, fishing here, oh. there, fishing tournaments. I mean, you were just down here too, doing stuff for your boat. Yeah. You know, pretty incredible. You know, like, I don't know. Are we? The, I don't even. How old are you? Thirty-five. Okay, so we're the, we're similar age. And when I started fishing, like the I, I got to fish two seasons, and then the whole Great Recession and two thousand eight financial crisis things happened, and that wreaked havoc on our industry. You know, and like I was used to when I, I thankfully I got on the blood money and the guy originally owned the the blood money by himself. He kind of had a, a pretty recession proof business. So we kind of were able to kind of do what we wanted. And when we needed something, we would just call and get it done. Yeah. Now we don't, we don't have that. Like now there's two, ner- two owners on the boat and which is great because they keep, they keep me pretty busy and they're ambitious and they want to fish and be competitive, which is what all, all, all I ever wanted to do. But you know, to have to deal with the two of them, which is fine because they're fine, but they're both very busy people. And you're like, Oh, well, you know, what color of the carpet you want to get or something like you got to make those decisions and then you got to like get things moving, you know, because it just doesn't, doesn't happen as fast as it did when, yeah. when, when I first started working for Pete on the 56 Viking, like it just doesn't happen. Like you, like I remember we, we fished a, a tournament, an old tournament called the Palm Beach Sailfish Classic years ago, and the rigger just broke. Like we were just trolling down sea, and the rigger broke off. In three weeks, we had a new new outrigger. Yeah, you know, like you could do that right now. You yeah. know, I I feel, I feel like I'm gonna order. I'm I'm genuinely thinking about ordering a spare outrigger to care carry with me. Like if we travel this spring or whatever, yeah, yeah. just to make sure, you know, you know, it doesn't go bad. I'd rather just have it with me. Yeah, yeah. Did not. Yeah, man. It's for everything for that matter, dude. I mean, it's like you got to have a spare everything. If not, <laughs> could ruin a trip. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's how it should be. But, you know, you think about you go on a trip to wherever, the Bahamas, Costa Rica, Mexico, whatever, you should have spares. But in the States, we can kind of get away with not having spares. But nowadays, it's not really like that. You should probably have your spares available w- with you, you know, like yeah, yeah. just simple things. Like, I mean, what maintenance do you guys have? left or what are you doing to your boat right now we're doing a thousand hour service and uh a lot of work on a little bit of work on the generators and then we're getting the exhaust risers new exhaust risers built by uh marine exhaust who've been pretty pretty amazing considering like when i pulled in there on monday last monday they were like there's nobody here and i'm like i don't know what to tell like out here the guy the guy they i guess there's a there's a difference in the guy who actually works out in the shop and then the guy who kind of handles the rest of it like i had a i have a spot like i was smart i think i was smart enough to be like hey this is when i'm coming to drop these exhaust risers off can we have a spot and they were able to accommodate us and i just texted them today or emailed with them today and uh we're only like a week and a half two weeks out which is exciting like just yeah relieving relief for me but you know it's you know you got to be aware of i'm i feel like i've done a good job of being aware of of the stuff of the of the difficulties that the people we work with are, are dealing with you know yeah like it, like i went there and he, he was like at marine exhaust he's like yeah I'm half the staff's out with covid and i'm like i yeah. know well please take my exhaust risers yeah. i've driven all i've driven all the way from from north carolina please take them yeah <laughs> Oh man. And then you guys have, I know you're trying to figure out your plan now. What, uh, Bahamas DR. Yeah. Uh, I mean, right now, I think, I think the plan is to still go to the, the Bahamas. If we can get into skips tournaments, we were a little, little late, you know, trying to get into those. So hopefully we can, we can, I'd actually like to meet you in person and be cool to hang out in the Bahamas for a couple of weeks. So yeah, hopefully absolutely. we can do that. If not, you know, JT and uh, the Salty Fair and the Freak Show catching 20 Blue Marlins a day is kind of got got our my owners kind of yeah, yeah. look at look in that direction, you know, and the way I look at it is for the money that we spend 
to fish tournaments in the Bahamas. And, you know, if you, if you win the custom boat shootout, you might catch like three blue Marlins and a couple whites or sails to win the whole thing. Yeah. Shoot. I mean, that time of year in the DR seems pretty automatic. You're going to go out four miles offshore and catch see how the first hour. Yeah. See, see a dozen or half a dozen white, a half dozen to a dozen whites in the day, you know? Yeah. So I, I don't know whatever they want to do. I'm, I'm ready for, I try to be ready for anything We're we're in, in the search for a new a new full time mate, which we haven't had a full time mate in a, quite a long time, so yeah. kind of excited to have that for the summer. Yeah. Do you have a yeah, mate I, lined up for your boat? Uh, not yet. Uh, Kyle Sherman, who was with me on the Spencer boat last, I don't know if years, Kyle. Uh, I don't he know. He just took Kyle a job. Sherman. He just took a job on that uh, that Titan boat. Uh, it was the Effie May that Corey ran. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, Kyle just took the job on the that. The Lunatico. Huh. No, no. Uh, it's oh. called Three's Enough. I got you. It's a new owner. I got you. Yeah. I I don't know if Kyle remembers me, but I remember Kyle. He brought a boat called the Sandrita over to East Harris. Right. Oh yeah, man, that was a good time. He'll be up. He'll be going up your way this year. That that book program. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It sounds like they do half the year up there, half the year here. I got gotcha. you. So that's that's interesting. Yeah, that's just such a small world, but uh, yeah, that was a fun fun time with. Kyle, I think he was a two two boats down, big ocean yacht. Oh yeah, yeah. Sandrita. So, what it? He rare, wants to get on that. We got to get him on the podcast soon. Yeah, I mean, there. I would love to get like my my good friend Sean on the on the Viking boat. I would love to get him on the, but it, it would just go downhill. Like we can't we can't go <laughs> can't be in public together. You know. Yeah. <laughs> um. What do you? So you're getting. Uh, I assume you're going to have a full time mate on the on the Weaver. Yeah, I mean, at least for. At least for this, you know, big trip, I'll probably end up doing, you know, Bahamas, yeah, uh, you know, for all that time and then probably head down to DR and, you know, probably be there, you know, who knows, rest of the year. Yeah. What uh, what do you look for in a, in a mate? You know, I see the old guy, a lot of old people or older people should say be, be courteous. They say that mates aren't are getting worse, but I feel like they're. I don't know. Some of the mates that I come across, they're pretty badass, you know. Absolutely. I mean, there's definitely there's a lot of good guys. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, I'd say a lot of the good guys have jobs too. So it's at the same time. It's oh yeah. The, don't get me wrong. No, I'm just talking about mates in general. The pool to to get a mate or is yeah is you know. I mean, I'm sure there's good kids and young kids coming up that are going to be amazing. But it's it's hard to hard to judge that like who's going to be who's going to be good you kind of got to get to know somebody you know there's a lot there's a lot to you can't just be a good fisherman anymore you got to be okay you got to be you know clean cut or you don't even have to be clean cut you just got to be fit in with the program you know some some programs are just a you know complete party and chaos the entire time my program is not like that so but you know you think about i don't know what do you look for in a mate yeah i mean Somebody that's just gonna work hard, you know, be respectful, and you know, you know, I think most important is get along with the boss. You know, I, if you, if you have somebody that the boss doesn't care to be with, then you got the wrong guy. You know, because yeah. it's all about keeping the boss happy. You know, especially on when you're just traveling in the summer and island hopping and spending a lot of time with the boss, the family, or friends of the boss. You know, you gotta have somebody that the boss and his buddies want to be around, you know? Yeah. You can't have somebody that's just pissing them off the whole time. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's kind of an interesting in the summer, in the summer up here, you can kind of get off the boat because we, we pretty much base out of Ocean City. Thankfully we have all the tournaments come to us, but down there in in the Bahamas and the DR, you kind of spend a lot of time on the boat, you know? Yeah. Close quarters, you know? So you definitely got to have somebody that the boss can be with, you know, or you could definitely, uh, ruin the boss's time but uh yeah you know having somebody that could you know is good with keeping the boat with the upkeep the cleaning all that and then you know even not not afraid to make food you know make lunches and things like that you know i mean i i, I usually try to make dinners and stuff are uh, you good cook? i can i mean i'm no you know no michelin star chef but uh, i try to do the best i can you know and i, I enjoy yeah. it I mean, it's not, and if you buy good, if you buy good steak or whatever, it's really not that hard to yeah. fuck it yeah. up, you know. You know, just don't overcook it. And cooking fish isn't too hard. I enjoy doing sushi. Uh, yeah, I'm thankful. My, I, we have a, we have a group that's pretty tight. Whenever we go somewhere, I never have to worry about. I don't even provision the boat for a day of fishing because I, when, when I first started running or working as a mate on the Blood Money and the owner ran at Pete, like. I like would just get 
subs and everything. And that was great for him. And then we started, yeah. we invited a group of people, like a, a couple guys to fish with us. We had like subs and stuff like that. And the guy was the, one of our people, one of our anglers, his name's Ernie Eckenrode. He was like, this is not going to do. So he, he goes out and he just bring, we've had, so I, the thing I do have to do is keep an air fryer. Sometimes in ocean city, I have to have two air fryers in case one breaks. Um, we have to have an air fryer, a toaster oven, a panini press, Oh, panini press. That's a, yeah, that's a must. So, but they, thankfully they take care of it, which is amazing. The guy, the, the, the owner, the guests of the owners, they're, that's their thing. They come, they make breakfast they make lunch. If we, if we make dinner like on an overnight or something like that, they thankfully, I don't have to worry about that. Cause we, we would starve. I'm kind of nervous about going to the Bahamas and it just being like three or four of us. And I mean, not having those guys on the boot and be like, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a, this is not going to be good. I hope I find a mate that can cook. <laughs> and now you'll be eating Lunchables. Yeah, Lunchables or something. I don't know. Oh, man. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of frozen burgers. Yeah. But are are you? I think like what's interesting is like being self aware of what like for me. I'm not really a naturally organized person. It takes a lot for me to be really, really organized. Like a lot of a lot of people this industry are super organized, right? So when I look for a mate, I look for somebody who's going to be like the the guy who organizes like completely like when i finish changing out a pump or anything i just give them all my tools i clean up where i was working and i just like put all this back yeah. you know are you are you naturally organized is like just something that works with you or i'm pretty organized so i definitely want to have somebody that's organized because i can't stand just yeah. cleaning up after somebody the whole time oh yeah that's for sure like i'm like when i when we hire somebody i'm like i you need to help me with this. Like yeah. I'll help you with anything. I'll rig, I'll rig all your baits for you. Just, just put stuff away for me. Please. Yeah, yeah. Like when I finish, like just follow me around and put stuff away. So <laughs> we had, we had one mate that worked for us for three or four years and he basically just put stuff away for me. Yeah. He was a good fisherman. Don't get me like, he was a great fisherman, but like at the dock, he was like the guy who put stuff away because yeah, I was, yeah. was very anal about the way we waxed and the way we did everything that I yeah. wanted. But I like, at the end of the day, I was like, oh, well, there's a whole pile of stuff and he needs to put that away. Yeah. No, I mean, you need to have somebody that could kind of just be good all around. You know, you can't just have one yeah. just good at one thing, you know. Do you feel like like for you can teach somebody to fish if the owner is willing to be patient with the mate, be like, hey, we can teach this guy. He's got he's got all the other stuff. That- yeah, yeah. yeah. Or harder to teach it. We could be like, yeah, no, he, he'll be all right. Or girl, because I see a lot more girl mates around. Yeah, yeah. More and more. Yeah. So, no, and then also, too, you know, at least the way I kind of keep it for the most part. But, you know, let's try to, you know, have one full-time guy. And then, you know, when the boss comes in and if we're going to fish hard X amount of days, you know, I fly in kind of a, you know, another guy. Or if I have, you know, a younger mate or something, then fly in, you know, mm-hmm. a really good guy, you know, dialed in. I, I kind of take charge of kind of the fishing aspect of it. Yeah. It all depends. Like, and you, you need it. I mean, just, I mean, obviously one mate can't do it. And there are a lot of mates that do it one man show, which, you know, I give those guys a lot of credit, but it's definitely, it's also a lot for one mate, you know, doing the bait, keeping the boat tight. You know, some of them are cooking, you know, it's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I I'm a big I I still enjoy rigging baits, so like I I have no problem helping helping the mate do that. Like, but kind of work at work it out if he's good at something like cooking. I'd be like, I'll just rig the baits if you want to cook, you know, yeah. something like that. But but yeah, I mean, I'm I try to like I like to rig baits and do mate stuff because I just assume that if I get fired, I'll have to go be a mate again. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad way to look at it. No, I mean, I'm always looking at the worst case scenario when I hope one day you get to meet my, my crew and they'll just be like, you know, I'm just constantly thinking that we're going to sink. We're never going to catch anything. And I mean, pretty much any day we get back to the dock without everybody, everybody dying is a good day, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Let's get back safely. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Hopefully we get to go do something this, this spring. I think it'll be really interesting. I'm kind of, kind of hoping that we go to the DR, but if we go to the Bahamas, that'll be. That'll be cool too. Yeah, yeah. No, I hope you guys make it south, man. It'll be. Yeah, I think you guys will enjoy it. It's thirty. It was thirty-seven degrees when I drove home from my 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 workshop tonight. Wait, hold on. Let me just say, you're drinking champagne and red wine right now. Oh yeah, I picked the wrong one up. So. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. So, so oh, man. what else, dude? That's it, man. I think we did oh. an hour. Yeah, I think so. I think so. We covered quite a bit of stuff. I don't want to bore everybody. 
No. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. Nick and Anthony, we'll catch you on the next one.